What's everybody doing? Hopefully you're all uh, doing well. In fact, can you all hear me loud and clear? Looks like it. All right. I'm getting responses. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate that. I am uh, better. Yeah, I got hit uh, actually last Monday, a week ago Monday night. Um, had a flu kick in, and it was nasty. Um, <laughs> Tuesday and Wednesday wasn't bad, and then Thursday it was just a freight train. Spent all day in bed, so uh, and part of the day on Friday, so which I haven't done in years. So it was not uh, it was not a lot of fun. So I've got this uh, cough still kind of hanging around. So I'm going to do my best to keep it at bay and uh, move through it. So if I ever disappear for 20 or 30 seconds, I have muted myself and gone to cough for a little bit. Hopefully it'll hopefully it'll stay stay away. So anyway, welcome out to the mashup. Those of you who might be new here, let's. Uh, Get this legal stuff out of the way. Ah, it's gonna be tough today. Uh, basically, it says we're not registered broker dealers, investment advisors. I will not give you any recommendations or advice. Everything that we do here is purely educational. Uh, if we're talking about trading, if I forget to say practice trade or unfunded trade or paper trade, then assume that it is. Uh, for regulatory reasons, we do not discuss funded trading here. So, with that being said, take a look at the agenda for the day, for the next 45 minutes or hour. And I know some of you are saying, I have a blank screen. That is the agenda. There is no agenda. That's the beauty of the mashup. We get to do whatever we want. So, uh, anything you're up for, anything you want to talk about, anything you have questions about, uh, fired off in the questions box, so we will uh, get into it and cover whatever, whether it's options, um, strategy-related, uh, technical analysis, or mindset. And for those of you that know me, know that those last two, mindset and technical analysis, are my two passions. So. So that is where we seem to drift to most of the time. So either charting or uh, or getting into the mindset stuff. So so let's see what is going on. I guess unless somebody wants to fire off the first question, or we can see. Uh, oh, Tesla's down a bit today, huh? I was looking at it yesterday. Um, oh no, it's up a little bit. What is up with Tesla? Um, I don't know if it's news related or not. Let me pull it up on extreme. And move a couple of things around here. So what is up with Tesla? We talk, well, I guess the question is, well, it has been up the last few weeks, but it's gotten beat up. Like most other, a lot of other stocks have gotten beat up. Um, yeah, there's not too, lot, too much unusual with Tesla, except it hasn't, you know, the last uh, couple days ago when the market rallied, this left a nice little doji, which is not a huge surprise, and we've got some resistance there. And then we're also about, that's about the halfway mark from where the drop started back there in uh, December, early January. So not a huge surprise. Got a bearish engulfing pattern yesterday. Uh, pretty light volume on the rally up, which is pretty normal lately. A lot of these are, um, a lot of the rallies are on light volume, which is not necessarily a bullish look. That's why it's, uh, it's this market's gotten tricky the last few weeks because it's, looks bullish in some ways, but then there's other things that are not there, and it's not technically bullish yet, so we're more neutral than anything, but uh, so that's what, it's, it's hard to tell what's going on, but um, there's no clear direction as of right now, so, but as far as Tesla goes, um, 
from a technical perspective, it's sitting right at the 50% mark. Unless it breaks out of that, what is that, 191 area? If it breaks out of that above it, then yeah, we're looking at you know 220, 250, somewhere in that range we could run to. But if it doesn't, and at least with the bearish engulfing pattern from yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I should say, um, oh, that is the day the market ran big. Tesla was down, gapped up, then sold off. So in decent volume, it was at the average bar, which was better than it's been in the last couple of weeks. So um, not sure. Not sure if it's news related on Tesla or not. have to go dig into that with respect to news. But uh, technically speaking, it's... It's neutral right now at best, and possibly bearish. It's up 31 cents right now. So UVXY isn't that the VIX ETF? Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, short. Um, yeah, the VIX is interesting. I don't remember if it was this a couple weeks ago that it came up. Or not, but um, there was something that you're welcome, Joseph. Something that came up that was interesting on the VIX. Oh, that's it. There we go. It's on a weekly chart. So if you look at, at uh, if we look back historically on the VIX, I don't know if we're, somebody tell me if we covered this last week and remind me, but or not last week, but the week before. I don't think we did. Notice that from 04 up through mid-07. The VIX just bounced there from about 12 to 17. It's kind of danced along there. All right, let me get rid of this box. We're talking about right here. All right, the VIX just danced along that area. Now what has it done here from 13 up to about 15? Looks pretty similar, right? And then what do we have right after that? This period right in here, I'm not going to put a box around it because it'll get too confusing, but from mid-07, when the market started to get sketchy, VIX bounced up and it started this whole new range between that 17 mark and about 30. And it bounced around there for a good year before the big crash happened. Now, it's not as clean or clear as of right now, but what's been happening in the last few months, I and mean, we're talking since August, August it broke out of that 17 range, and it's for the most part stayed above there with the exception of a month or two here. It dropped back just briefly below it. But we're getting a similar type of pattern where the VIX is staying up in this elevated area. If it doesn't break below 17 and, it, and the market rolls over and it heads back up from here, As all bets are off. So we're getting a very similar pattern with the VIX as we had to the 0708 crash. So does that mean anything? Not necessarily. But is it something to be aware of and know that there's a possibility of something like that happening again? Yeah. So, and you can see this chart here, I mean, considering it's uh, basically a replica of the VIX, except that it's a VIX short. This is essentially is going to be showing the same thing. So, not sure if there was something more specific you were looking for on that, Michelle, or not. But um, so, if there was, if you were, if there's something specific about it, then let me know. Question, uh, a couple other questions. Window-based or Apple? I use Windows-based. Um, I'm not a big fan of Apple. And part of the reason, um, I, I don't know, I just I don't like the idea that if you, well, you're pretty much all in or nothing. It's either all Apple or nothing because all the peripherals, everything you use has to be Apple or not. Um, and I've heard people say that you know, Apple's the best, it's great, and then other people say they hate it. and you know, it's, it's obviously a personal preference, but I use Windows based, and especially with respect to trading, most of the trading software out there has been developed on a Windows uh, application. 
and it's starting to transition, but um, it's probably going to be quite some time before it's there. Um, and for the most part, anybody that uses Apple is running Parallels, so they're running they're running Windows based to run uh, the software that is um, for trading because almost all of it's based on Windows. So. Aaron uh, asking about using LLC, LP, or Corp. Um, I've got a Corp, but that's my personal situation. So it could be any one of those three, realistically. Um, asking whether to trade, what type of entity to trade in. It really depends on your personal situation. Um, sometimes it's better to do a Corp. Sometimes it's better for an S, sometimes it's better for a C, sometimes an LLC is better, sometimes an LP is better. It really depends on um, a lot of it is kind of lifestyle related and what you're working with and, and where you're going and what you're doing. So um, it really varies. So it's hard to give you a definitive answer, and I wish I could tell you use this one. But there is no right or wrong answer. Uh, it's all going to be based on what you're, what you're trying to accomplish and where you're headed with it. So... Um, Best thing you can do is well, you should know the, the uh, attorneys at Anderson. That's this, that's what they specialize in. They specialize in in structuring um, real estate investors and traders. That's their that's their niche. So, and they can give you an idea of which one's going to be best for your specific situation. So. Um, Joseph, not sure what you're referring to. Question is, do you think it will rise? Oh, we we'll get back to Tesla. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. So we're going back to Tesla. Okay. Um, not necessarily. It's a good question. Uh, and this is one thing that, you know, what we what we see a lot of times, and Apple's a good example, is when there's a new product release, sometimes uh, companies go crazy over it or people go crazy over it, so it boosts the stock price because people get excited about it. Um, but I would say the vast majority of time, the companies release a new product, uh, it does absolutely nothing to the stock. And a lot of times, you know, there was a big craze around the Apple iPhone when it first came out. And then for, you know, the next few versions that came out, everybody got all excited about it. And um, it's just not normal, you know. And the reality is that, you know, releasing a new product um, doesn't really, doesn't necessarily mean anything with respect to the company's business. I mean, it does if it's a really hot product and it moves off the shelf so fast that they can't keep it in stock, like Apple. Um, <laughs> yeah, or no Apple Watch. See, people got excited about that and thought it was going to be this big hot craze, and it really didn't turn out to be much. So, you know, unless it's a unless it's a game changer. I mean, the Apple iPhone was was to a certain to a certain degree a game changer. Um, unless it's something that significant. It, it, it's probably not going to do anything to the stock at all. It's not going to affect it one way or the other. Um, and I'm not familiar with their three series or what it is that they're doing or anything, so I don't I don't pay that close attention to Tesla. So um, is that their uh, – I did see some – I mean, I've seen a little bit here and there about it, and they're bringing out some uh, less expensive model that's like, for what, 40, 45 grand instead of 100 grand for a car? Um, okay. Yeah, I do remember seeing that. I mean, out for a while, but um, the question becomes, too, I mean, with respect to that is, are they going to be profitable? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean anything if you make a new product and you put it out and it's it's all the craze. If you don't make any money off of it, if you don't have profits from it, then it's definitely not going to help the stock at all. So, um, and I was wondering about that. You know, you look at a lot of the over the last decade or so, you've got you know Mercedes and Porsche, and um, they're all Mercedes, especially you know created the C class, 
which is their less expensive model. Um, and I don't know, I'm, I'm, one, I'm one of those that believe that uh, from a business perspective that you stick with what you're best at, you know, stay in your niche. And Mercedes creates luxury vehicles. And, you know, they're trying to, to reach down and take market share from, um, you know, other, um, I don't know what the right word is, moderate. You know, I mean, a Honda and Acura and Infiniti and, um, you know, they're, they're trying to come down into their markets. And not necessarily that it's a bad thing, but if you're going to be a luxury car maker, then be a luxury car maker. Don't make a middle-of-the-road car just because you think that there's more profit there. And there may be. And maybe it is a good thing. Maybe Mercedes is making more money off it. I don't know. But, you know, Porsche's done the same thing. They're coming down into the, the mid-priced because they want to hit a wider marketplace. You know, they can get more customers if they cut. Well, just because you do that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a better. And then you sacrifice quality. I do remember saying something several years ago about Mercedes, how their quality dropped in all their vehicles because they lost focus on what they were good at and started doing this other stuff over here, making a, a mid-priced vehicle, and then everything else suffers, if you know what I mean. So, um, you know, I don't know that Tesla will, um, will have the same issues or not, but they may or may not. So uh, it just depends on how they, they deal with it and how they do it. So... So there's a lot of, uh, I mean, long story short, Joseph, there's a lot of uh, different variables in what a new line uh, means for a car manufacturer, so any manufacturer for that matter. Um, I mean, cars are pretty niche, I think, but so and it's hard to say. The only way to, to know is, you know, wait and see, but I don't know, it doesn't. It doesn't help. If you want Tesla to go up, then obviously you want it to be a smashing success. Oh, Dre, Drea, and I'm, I'm, I think that's how you pronounce it. Hopefully I've got it right. If not, then correct me. Um, my story on how I got into the market. Wow. Um, how long it took. That's an interesting question, and it's one that's um, impossible to answer, and because everybody's different, um, it took me a little longer than I think the average person. Um, but I was I was 24, you know, I just turned 24. Actually, it's we're a month away from my 16 year anniversary. It was April 3rd and 4th of 2000. Um, I stumbled into it. It literally was. Um, I just moved up to the Seattle area about a year before that. And uh, I went to work for a gentleman that um, I'd been in the I'd been working in pretty much the tire industry for all my life. I mean that's what I got into when I graduated, and um, my intent was to buy a store. That's what I kind of set my sights on, and decided that's what I wanted to do. And uh, so I got wind of a gentleman in the Seattle area that was going to sell his store. And so I had a conversation with him, said, here's the direction I'm going. He said, good. So I went to work for him with the intent to buy his store eventually. And uh, almost a year later, that wasn't, uh, I could tell that was kind of obvious it wasn't going to happen anytime soon. Uh, funny thing is, that was almost 16, well, 15 years ago, and he still owns it. <laughs> so good thing I, I kind of saw that. But uh, hang on just a sec. So I started looking around. Um, I was looking for work, basically, and got wind of an opportunity at this company. I didn't know anything about it, and they said, come check this workshop out and see if you like it. And if you like it, then we'll talk about a job. And so I wound up sitting in a two-day workshop, 
checking it out and I fell in love. I went, wow, this is the best business on the planet. And I was already business minded. That's what I wanted to do. So, um, you know, there's no, you don't have the employees, the tree, you don't have the headaches, especially coming out of the tire business where you have tons of inventory, which is capital intensive. Uh, you've got employees to deal with. You're working on people's vehicles, which is a huge liability. If somebody messes something up and somebody drives down the road and forgets to take a clamp off the brake line, <laughs> like happened one time, one of my the guys that worked for me at Bob's store, whew, guy gets half a mile down the road and puts the brakes on to slow down and swerves in the other lane because it grabbed the brakes on one side. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it could have been catastrophic. So, um, Coming from that to something like the market, I just went, wow, this is amazing. Um, but like I said, I was just, um, I had just turned 24. So, you know, young and dumb, and now I'm just old and dumb. You know, nothing, that part didn't change, just getting old. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's essentially how I got my start. So I went to work for that company, and um, and basically learn how to trade at the same time. So it was it was an awesome experience. But with respect to how long it should take, it, it that's kind of like Aaron's question about what type of entity. I mean, there's no way to say. I know people that have done it in six months, and I know people that have taken years. I took, you know, a lot longer than most. Um, we're talking oh, years. Um, um, yeah, so you, you got the idea. Do you want to try open your just uh, Excel or whatever uh, you use? Make sure that it's all working. What is going on here? Um, I don't know if you guys are you guys hearing that too. Just overlap going on. I don't know what's happening. Okay, hang on just a second. Am I losing connection to you? What's up? All right. Um, <laughs> that was odd. That's a first. That has never happened before. Um, <laughs> yeah, Steve. Exactly. Uh, sounds like that was. I think that was Gregory, one of our tech support guys. So, I'm not sure how he got into our class and got onto the mic, but um, <laughs> always. Uh, it's always fun, right? Um, I don't remember where I was now. What was I even talking about? Oh, the question about um, yes, he is a great tech. Um, how long it should take you? It, it, it all varies. We all, we all bring different uh, challenges to the market. So I, I wish I could give you a definitive answer and say you know it's going to be six months for you, but there's no way to do that because it could be six months, it could be six years. So uh, it it just varies. So the only thing I can say is that you know we all bring different challenges to the market, and if you have challenges, I mean I, I brought certain mentalities and, and a certain mindset into the market that a lot of them have worked in my favor, but a lot of them have worked against me. And so it's one of those things. Um, you know, the best thing I can say is that trading is very challenging, and um, 
the most important thing you can do is work on your mindset and work on those things that because you have this self-talk in your mind that says all kinds of things. You, you're going to tell yourself all kinds of things. You're going to have a rough day. You're going to have challenges. You're going to make mistakes. And um, the best thing you can do is learn from them and, and, and continue going. So it's not uh, it's not easy. And the only way, in my opinion, that you fail in trading is to quit. So um, the best thing you can do, in my opinion, is commit to it. You know, if you're committed to succeeding at it one way or the other, no matter what it takes, I mean, it might take you 12 years. I don't know. It might not. It just depends. Um, you know, one of the things with respect to that, I asked, or not asked, but there's a um, guy I went to school with, I grew up with, he's a little bit older than me, but um, we became friends after high school, and he was playing in the minor leagues, loved baseball, had a passion for it, and he worked his butt off, because he wanted to go to the bigs, and he, after, I don't know, a few years in the minors, three, four, five years, uh, he got called up a few times. And so he got a taste of what it was like playing in the big leagues. And that little taste drove him even harder. And uh, I think it was a one or a two season. I think it was, maybe it was 2000. Um, he played, he got called up halfway through the season about for the White Sox. And he, he played, uh, he played the rest of the season with him. And, uh, so it was awesome. I went back there and went to a few games, and <laughs> it was kind of a bit fun call, calling friends going, hey, guess where I'm at? I'm at Wrigley, about 20, 30 rows behind home plate in the lower section down with the coaches or the, the players' wives and family and uh, for the Cubs and Sox series. So like the biggest series in Chicago, I've got tickets right behind home plate. Uh, it's awesome. But uh, – you know, he didn't. He didn't actually suit up. Excuse me, just a second. He didn't actually make the team, if you will, make the cut. He didn't suit up on opening day until the O's. I think it was 07 or 08 season. He played the minors for either 14 or 15 years without "quote unquote" making the team. For 14 or 15 years. There's Gregory again. I don't know what is going on there. Um, I don't know how he's getting in here, but hopefully he'll be out soon. Um, so anyway, I mean, long story short is that, that Burke wanted it. And he worked his tail off to get there. And it took him, I mean, I don't know what the stats are. I actually, I actually remember emailing the, the minor league um, if they had any stats on how many people, how many guys play that long in the minors before they actually make it to the big league. And they didn't have any data on it. But I would venture to guess that the number is extraordinarily small. It means how many people will work that hard at getting to where they want to go. Most most won't. So um, I guess the question is, what's it worth to you? How how important is it? And if it's important enough, if it's something that you really want, then you'll keep going regardless. So And I know there's people in here in this class that have been at this for years and are still uh, working at it. So, so hopefully that gives you a decent answer. That's probably not what you were looking for, but that's the thing. A lot of times in trading, we come looking for definitive answers. We want, you know, it's going to take six months or a year, or it's use this kind of entity, or, you know, there's just a lot of things there's just no black and white answer for. So, uh, Brent, <laughs> Brenda, wait until the end of the day to enter trades if you get an alert in the morning. Um, depends. <laughs> They're going to uh, not sure. I usually try to wait till the end of the day to see how things are closing. But there are times where it makes sense to enter in the morning 
it makes sense to get in if uh, if the conditions are right and everything looks good then yeah but it, and that's a, a variable thing that I hate to say it but you kind of have to just you, you have to learn what signs there are sometimes of you know sometimes it's pretty obvious that things are going to keep going all day and sometimes you just have to be willing to take the risk that you know yeah if we're up a little bit in the morning, it's either going to keep going or it's not. Sometimes it turns around and you get stopped out the same day. So uh, there is no definitive answer, but for the most part, I like to wait till the end of the day uh, because the close is a more important indication of what direction things may be headed. So clear as mud. Uh, the law firm Dre is Anderson, Anderson Business Advisors. They're in. Uh, they're based out of Nevada, out of out of Vegas. They also have an office in the the Seattle area, Tacoma area. But um, yeah, no Apple Watch. I think I said that. Drea. How do you know it's time to get an entity? Once you make a certain amount of money or need to start up before making consistent profits, it's best to start it sooner rather than later. The sooner you can do it, I, I, you want to do it um, for several reasons. The, every single dime you spend on education, personally, you can't write it off. Uh, as an entity, considering you are um, the CEO or president or manager, whatever you become, um, you have to stay educated in your field. So the company can then pay for your expenses. So it all becomes tax write-off then. As an individual, you can't do that. So it's uh, it's better to do that as soon as possible. So uh, there's so many advantages to using an entity uh, with respect to taxes, and there's just all kinds of benefits to it. So um, if you can afford to do it now, then I say do it as soon as you can. So. Let's see. Oh, we got that. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly, Dennis. Dennis says, you don't ride as many buses in the show. You don't touch anything either. Uh, that's one thing I learned about it was that he was referring to my friend Burke playing baseball. Um, in the minor leagues, you carry all your bags, you do all that stuff, and um, in the major leagues, you don't touch anything. I mean, there's people there waiting on you hand and foot. He told me that. He said that it's just, it's uh, you don't touch your bags, you don't do it, and you get pampered and waited on. So uh, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. It's interesting. So. And I heard a few stories about things happening, so it was cool. We had to be out there uh, when I was in Chicago that time. We went to dinner because uh, Burke was standing with Burley, Mark Burley. And uh, if you're baseball fans, you know who he is. He's a he's, he's one of the greatest pitchers in the game. Um, but he was also, at the time, he was, what, 24 years old, I think, 26, something like that. And uh, just an amazing guy, uh, extremely humble. You know, here he is, 24, 26 years old, making, what, $3.5 million a year at that time. And uh, extremely humble. Uh, knew that he was blessed. Knew that he had something special and, and did not flaunt it and just um, was very grounded. And it was it was pretty amazing to see. So just a great guy overall. You're welcome, Joseph. It is... Uh, it is. It's thanks for not encouraging us to encourage us not to quit. Um, it is. I've I've always said trading's tough. It is mentally and emotionally very difficult. It's one of the most challenging things you'll probably ever do. Um, so it is. Uh, it's something that you'll have days where you're on cloud nine and everything's wonderful, and other days it's like, eh, what am I doing here? So, 
it is uh, it's very important to keep a picture in your mind of, of where you're going and, and what you're doing it for. You know, and imagine you're, you're all here for certain reasons. You know, whatever whatever it is, whether it's financial freedom, you just want to make a living, you want to pay off some bills, you want to do something for your kids or grandkids or community, community church, whatever. Um, there's a motivation you have behind it, and you've got to keep that um, you got to keep that motivation alive, especially on the tough days. And when you have when you have the tough days, you got to remember what's your reason for being here. Because if it's not strong enough, if you don't have a big enough reason, if you don't have a big enough why, then it, it's easy to quit. But if you have a big reason for, for doing it, then um, again, um, so, so yeah, I don't, I'm not even sure. We need to somehow fill the hole and plug the gap as to how he's even getting in here. <laughs> Interesting. So <laughs> nice, Dennis. Difference between Motel Six and the Hilton. So. <laughs> A party line. It sounds like it, doesn't it? Sounds like a party line. You know, crazy enough, I actually remember it. I remember party lines. I actually used it once or twice. So my dad will tell me all about it. He grew up in Minnesota, and they used to have that when he was a kid. So, but uh, yeah, party lines were on their way out when I was a kid. So that'll date me. So that's crazy. I just realized I'm. I'm Less than a month from the top of the hill. That's crazy. So let's see what's going on here with everything. Let me sort these real quick. See who's moving big. Um, uh, let's see Google, Amazon, Anthem, Celgene, Netflix, LinkedIn. Just look at it. Things are. Well, they're still about fifty, not quite fifty-fifty. Starting to turn, starting to turn red. Where's the the overall market? Oops. Um, see percentage is what's down the most. Netflix, sell gene. Just looking to see what interesting is going on here, if anything. Um, Okay, Dennis. Uh, what? What are we talking about, Dennis? You see, you see, when you see your TSS bring up the date on that. I'm trying to think of what I was referring when you said that. Oh, the party line. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe we should. Maybe we should start one there. Really, Aaron? <laughs> you had to ask, huh? Yeah, 40. Well, I told you, you should be able to do the math on that, right? I said I was 24 when I started, and that was back in 2000, 16 years ago. So, so yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be 40 here in a few weeks. So, don't ask the date. So, I know, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting old. And y'all don't need to remind me. My wife already reminds me all the time. I'm sure it'll get worse in a few weeks. Oh, Drea. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. I'm assuming I am since you haven't corrected me. What exactly is a summit for? Is it go to a lot of classes all day? It is three days of um, all of us, all of the instructors, all five of us. Uh, so it'll Bill... Bill um, Mark K, Rob, John, and myself, and uh, it's just a blast. It is a it's a three day event, and we all usually teach once or twice, sometimes three times. Uh, it just depends. There's lots of different variables, but um, 
we all get up and you know we talk about kind of our little niche. I mean, a lot of it's, you know, a lot of trading is overlap, whether it's strategy related. You know, John does a lot of stuff with iron condors, um, so he mostly you know shows his strategy and what he does. Uh, Mark and I are very technical. We use uh, <laughs> technical analysis mostly. Um, Rob does as well. He's his niche is kind of Fibonacci and uh, you know <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Bill is Bill. <laughs> Bill's, Bill's kind of a mix of all of us, but you know, well, basically, um, it's three days of everybody. So, and then, and then we had um, this last year. We had um, who came in? We usually have one or two guest speakers, somebody that comes in and, and talks about their specific thing. Owen came up and uh, showed some stuff this last year. Um, e Signal was there, uh, and who else was there? So. It's always a surprise. I don't. I don't deal with any of that as far as uh, you know what goes on with it. I, I try to stay out of the behind the scenes. I just do my thing. I just love teaching, so um, I basically just do my teaching thing and and stay out of the rest of it. So I let uh, I let those guys play with that stuff. But uh, yeah, it's just a blast. So anybody that's been there can tell you. Especially the last two have been a blast. They've been in Vegas, and uh, we had the uh, we were staying at the Palms. And we had the, uh, the the first night we had a big after hours party for those that went VIP. We had one of the big suites at the end of the Palms that has the big old hot tub that hangs out and you can see over the strip. And um, so it was just a good time. We just went and you know had I think hors d'oeuvres and drinks and uh, and just hung out. So it was kind of fun to to let things go and you know have a day of working basically and and teaching and learning and and then to just go unwind and relax at night. So it was a blast, and uh, this year's Orlando. So um, I imagine we'll have something similar. I'm not sure exactly what. Like I said, I stay out of that stuff, but uh, but it's just a good time. It's a good time to go spend three days with like-minded people that are all uh, working towards the same thing. And anybody that's like I said that's been there will tell you they've, there's a lot of lifelong friendships that have been made out of it too. So. Um, you get to just hang out and, and have a good time. So if you haven't experienced this, the Trader Super Summit, then I would suggest going. Uh, and Orlando should be a blast. So uh, <laughs> yeah, 50 will be here soon, I know. Well, happy birthday, Drea. Only just a month, two and a half weeks early, but I wouldn't even ask. Um, Oh, that's awesome, Dennis. <laughs> I know. I know I'm young, despite what my wife says. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Dennis says he traded his, started his second career, his next career, trading at 70, looking for a good long career. So that's awesome. I love hearing that. So... Should we uh Yes, yeah, Joseph, thank you. I was just gonna say let's see if we can go find something to something that might be worth looking at trading or at least setting up a plan on. Uh, MasterCard. Take a look at MasterCard. And let's see. There's the entire history of it. It's been real jumpy lately. You can see, I mean, the last couple of months have been like that. You see all the gaps compared to what it used to do. It's, uh, which is not abnormal. It's been a volatile market and things have been kind of crazy. But uh, this is what I'm talking about with the, you can see as things sold off there in January, February, volume accelerated. You can see even the moving average line down there on the volume picked up towards the end of the drop, which is normal. But then look at the volume. I mean, the last two or three weeks, 
even though the, you know most a lot of stocks have been rallying just like this one this is a very similar picture to many of them uh, the volume has dropped off big time which if you're familiar with volume if stock price is going up and volume is going down that's a bearish sign it's not bullish it's like you know the, the music keeps getting louder at the party but people are still leaving you know there's not people coming in the door you know it may look like the parties are getting bigger it's not it's actually shrinking so there's less and less people that are buying the stock so um, definitely makes the bullish run um, questionable so the only thing about MasterCard is there's not you know looking to see if it's sitting anywhere um, and there's a little bit of that's a decent support resistance area. I like to annotate mine, make them. Uh, the solid lines are more solid support resistance levels, and then I'll make a large dash if it's fairly solid. If it's really minor, I'll make it a small dash. In other words, the smaller the dash, the less important it is. Uh, so I mean, it's sitting right there. You know, that's at 89 basically. Uh, it's not a huge significant support resistance. Nothing I would trade off of. I mean at this point, let's see if there's anything on here. Um, no indicators really that that show us much. In fact, you know what I just realized? I don't have the 50 and the 200 day on here. I don't know where they went. So let's put it on there. 200, that's a simple. I want that. Movement average. What's this one? This is the 20. Where's our 50-day? There's one right here. We'll make this the 50. Where'd the 200-day go? Oh, there it is. It's just not thick. That's why I can't see it. With uh, medium. There we go, that's better. Yeah, so we're sitting right on the 50-day. I need to change those to purple. I'll do that later. So MasterCard, kind of iffy right here. <laughs> Let's look at CMG. This one we looked at several weeks ago, huh? Who was that brought that up? Wishing you'd have bought probably, because we were talking about that right back here, I think. I think it was that day, wasn't it? Wish you'd have bought some about four-month calls on it, huh? It's at 400 now. It's at 525. But that's the thing. How do you, you know? How do you know this? You don't know that things are going to go. Same thing. CMG is very similar. Uh, obviously, been beat up. The uh, E. coli scare. That well, not really a scare. They actually had E. coli issues, but um, obviously beat them up. You know, 750 to 400. No matter what, two, three months, four months, maybe. It's bouncing back, but you can see the resistance there about 540. So if it does stay bullish, it's probably going to. Well, I don't know if I should say probably. It may slow down there. It may not. Uh, we never know. But with respect to trading, this thing's pretty elevated. I wouldn't be terribly excited about getting in this right here. Uh, if it pulls back to that 476 line, then I'd be looking at it if it bounces and starts to show if it holds that base. But again, just like with Master, you can see the you can see all the volume on each drop that it has, which a lot of these I believe are news related. This is back in November, December. That's when the E. coli stuff was hitting. Um, but you look at the volume just in the last two or three weeks, it's been extremely light. So yeah, people are buying it up and it's going higher, but they're not doing it with a whole lot of excitement. So which could keep going. I mean it's not unusual to see things rally with light volume and continue to go higher. But eventually that light volume comes to a head and people are no longer excited about it and they can't hold it up, so it sells off. 
So uh, anything you see light volume on the last few weeks, if you're going to trade it bullish, I would suggest being cautious. Um, either have a tight stop or take a smaller position or uh, just be ready for it to drop. And it could drop very quickly. It's hard to say. So, but then again, you know, there's the, there's the hard thing about trading. This is one of the challenging things is that it could, it could turn around. I mean, it could take off and, and volume could come back in and people, it accelerates to the upside. And we never know. And there's why, you know, those of you that know me know that I harp on odds because that's one of the most important things because the odds of it going up versus down is 50-50. Every single day is 50-50. We just don't know. I mean, you can analyze the chart and you can find patterns and you can see certain things that give us an indication which way it might go next, but there's never a guarantee. It's always 50-50. So keep that in mind. You know, we do our analysis to try to get a better idea of what's going on, but we have to accept the fact that it's always, 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 always 50-50. So... You are welcome, Joseph. And with that, I am going to finish it up. And uh, so, for those of you who don't know this, most of you I think know this already, but the, I do an insights uh, two or three days a week. This last week, uh, with being down for the count, um, I did not, so I sent off an email and asked them to extend. Uh, all my subscribers for an extra week since I missed uh, several days this last week because of being sick. So if anything like that happens ever, then just know that uh, if I go AWOL for a few days or something like that, I'm most likely down and out for the count, and I'll send an email and ask them to extend it. So, um, But my insights are nothing more than a video commentary, two, three days a week. Um, I do three different ones generally. I do a market update, which is just uh, kind of a big picture view of economic stuff that's coming up, economic information, economic data uh, that may or may not affect the market. And then I look at the overall markets. I'm just giving my opinion as far as bullish, bearish, neutral, uh, what I see, anything that I decide, you know, anything that, that hits my brain that I think is important that you need to know, I usually share it. So, uh, you know, having almost 16 years of experience. And being in the trenches and going through the tough stuff, um, you know, certain market situations and things that are going on right then and there, it's like, okay, I've seen this before. Here's what we're up against, and here's what I see, and here's what you may want to watch out for. And, uh, so, and then I do a big guys, which is uh, higher price stocks, more volatile. Well, not necessarily more volatile, but higher price stocks that. Uh, and basically what I do is I filter through my big guy scan, which is usually about 400 stocks, looking for patterns, um, whether it's head and shoulders, triangles, or morning stars, evening stars, engulfing patterns. I basically find patterns. I recognize the patterns. I narrow. I, I take that list. From the 400, I usually get 40 to 60 candidates. From there, I go look at the best of the best. So here's some that are potentials that, that you know may be ripe this next week. There may be a, a potential to trade them in the next day or two, possibly the next week or two. Uh, and they basically set up trading plans. You haven't seen, uh, well, and there's, here's one on CMG. And this is an old one. It's been there for a while. but And this is a bearish trading plan, so it's, it doesn't mean anything right now. I just leave the lines there because then I can just drag them around. But uh, I think MasterCard had one on there as well. And, again, this has been there for a while. But uh, you can see the red line is the stop, the green line is the target, and the orange line is the entry point based on a four to one risk reward. So essentially what I do is go through and, and here I'll just show you. Here is, well there's the original list from, well this is just the other day. I was doing the, the um, go through my, the big guys. And essentially what I do is go through this list, which you see is 427 symbols, I flag any one that I see a pattern is. You see little check marks there. And then I put those into a list, which comes out to this one, which in this case was 32. There wasn't a whole lot this week because the market action has been goofy. So there's less patterns than normal. Uh, from that list, I flag. You can see the ones that are flagged, which comes down to the final list, which is this, which is 11. Typically, there's about 20, 25 different symbols.
and see if I can go to the one before, which is a week and a half before, but there's more. See, there's 22. This is the this is a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, and what you'll see here is you can see Adobe on the right there is the trading plan. This is the red line, the green line, the orange line that says here's the entry, here's the exit. And obviously these are subjective. It's all based on my opinion. But uh, if you're going to pay for my analysis and my commentary, then I'm going to give you my opinion. But that's basically what it is, is here's some candidates, here's some potential trades that you may want to keep an eye out for. So if that's something that interests you is for three months um, getting a commentary, similar to what we did today. I mean, we're looking at a lot of the charts and I'm just telling you what I think, analyzing MasterCard and CMG and um, whatever the other ones we looked at. But that's $7.95 a quarter if you want to do the insights. And then I've got two other tools, Patterns in a Flash, which is all technical analysis. Uh, it's all, there's six and a half hours of video in there about uh, not only the, the foundational information that you need with respect to reading charts, but a bulk of it is patterns. There's the flashcards, hence the flash, uh, which the flashcards are designed to train your eyes to see the patterns on the right side of the chart, where they're important. You've got to be able to see them on the right side or they mean nothing, right? If you don't, if you see them in the middle or three months ago, you can't trade them at that point. So the whole purpose of that, the whole starting point, the whole reason this came about was because I was frustrated not being able to see the patterns on the right side of the chart. So there's the flashcards. There are six and a half hours of video all about the patterns. Most of them are five to eight minutes in length. They're bite size. So if you find a specific pattern, you can go watch that video about exactly what to look for in that pattern. What criteria, there's an example, and where you may want to get in or get out, uh, or entry points, I should say. So, and then of course there's the quizzes, which gives you good feedback, lets you know what you got and what you didn't. So, and for that, I mean, it's only 229 for the first quarter, and then you see at the bottom there it says renew each for 99. So at the end of the first quarter, if you decide to keep it, it's just 99 dollars to keep it. Uh, it's an absolute steal. And then advanced trading mindset, similar type of setup. And, and keep in mind, just to make sure this is clear, these are all recorded. They're available 24/7. You can get them on your mobile devices. Uh, you can get them anywhere, anytime. So they're not live classes, they're not, um, you don't have to schedule your life around them, they're completely on demand. So they're there whenever you want them. Advanced Trading Mindset is six and a half hours of video, all purely about mindset. The challenges, the mental things that we bring to the market that hurt us, and how to correct them. What to do to uh, overcome those things. So, and again, it's priced exactly the same as Patterns in a Flash. It's $229. The first time you subscribe to it, if you keep it active, you can renew it for just $99 per quarter. So that is it. And then if you want the uh, best deal, if you don't have any of these and you want all three of them, you get all three of them for just $995. So you get the insights, and then basically that makes Patterns in a Flash and Advanced Trading Mindset only $100 each. So you essentially get them at the renewal price. So, so there we have it. Uh, if you have any questions, then either call support or, because I'm fresh out of time, but uh, call support or shoot an email. You also have my email address, so if you have questions, uh, you can shoot off an email, and I will address that. Uh, usually, I address it in the insights. So. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you, Joseph. I do feel quite a bit better already, so hopefully next week I'm 100%. So. Um, yes, Thursdays, the new days. I've kind of over the last year and a half, two years of doing the mashup, I've kind of bounced back and forth. And part of that reason is that you know, some people can make it Wednesdays and some people can't make it Thursdays and others can. So I've tried to kind of switch it up back and forth. Part of it's scheduling too, just you know, personal life. But um, I know that there's been people that have emailed in and said, hey, I can't make Wednesdays. It'd be nice if we had a Thursdays again. So try to change it up a little bit so that everybody can have a taste of it. So, <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. So, All right, you all have a wonderful week and a great weekend. We'll see you all, uh, we'll see you all done around. You all take care. Bye-bye.